Sooner Scoop HD. Uh, Porter, you know, it's kind of crazy way the season started with Coach Brady leaving and then bringing in Doc. As Doc has gotten more acclimated to everything, how has he been helping you the most? Well, one, there's a, a lot of trust factors with Doc. I've known him for 30 years. So there's a lot of trust factors. I know him. Um, I, I value and covet experience. And he's just got so much experience. And he's just a great sounding board, talking basketball, talking situations with him. Um, you know, he's just, uh, he's just, and he's like such a positive, upbeat guy. And, uh, but I love his experience. I, I covet it. I love our friendship. We've known each other for a long time, and uh, for him to be able to just step in short notice and and uh, be there for us, um, it's been great. With Jesse Porter, we've talked a lot about close games in the Big 12, just how talked about and how competitive it's been. Obviously, every game so far for you guys has been so close, but just going through these experiences of how close these games are, one, two possession, does that help with just, do you kind of just, the team has to just assume going into every game that's probably going to come down to the wire? Well, what it's helping with is, is the attention to detail on the little things. You know, everything matters. You know, uh, <clears throat> a missed checkout on a free throw in, in the first half matters. You know, it just you've got you've to shrink your mental mistakes. You've got you to, you know, execute. You've got to, you, you, you just, you know, you can really, um, you know, drive home the importance of all the little stuff. You know, there, there's, no, there's no scooting around it. They're all close games. Everything matters. Everything matters. And that's the thing we pound home in on our get better tapes and watching it and things we can do better of, you know, whether it's either end, offensive execution, taking care of the ball, defensive coverages. Um, there is very small margin of error in this league. But what it does to your team is it helps you pound home that, that, that it matters. This matters, and uh, our guys have been very receptive. But to that end, obviously, talking about the X's and O's and discipline stuff, but the, is there a mental toll that goes to you know, going through all these close games? Is it do you kind of have to, to balance maybe the impact it has on that, or does it kind of help strengthen the resilience of the mental aspect of it? The, all these close probably games? both. You know, there, there, it always the more you go through things in life, you you build up armor. And the more you go through experiences of close games, you you get you gather experience. So yeah, it's it's, it's got to be building up resilience, building up experience, building up knowledge of, of what to do, what not to do, what what you don't want to do, what you do want to do. Um, so of course, you know, I thought I think it does. Um, and uh, does it take a toll mentally? Yeah, I mean it's um, it's fun to win by twenty five. <laughs> Trust me, I'm, I'm I'm feeling great when we win by twenty five. Um, so uh, it just doesn't happen in our league. So yeah, it's, 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 I mean, I think I'm looking at the, you know, talking to some fans, I know that's probably wearing on them too. I mean, they're, they look like, our fans look like they've had aged a bunch too. I mean, like we, during these games, I've had a bunch of people tell me, I can't handle another close one. I'm like, well, strap it on and guess what? We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna be going, there's gonna be a lot of ones in this league. Wait, wait, say that again. Last five minutes of regulation in your Big 12 games. Okay. Your opponent's 69 points, you guys 46, so differentials minus 23. You talked about the late game defense. What is it, have you identified any patterns in, in what flips? I mean, Sam was in here talking about you know, sticking to the scout and, and the little things, the rebound. Yeah. You I know I, between the Texas Tech and the Kansas game, that was, too, that was a big of the differentiation right there. Both of them were 10-point leads. Texas Tech, our transition, they just, their, their transition, I bet you both those were on the road. You could just see their crowd getting in, and we, our, our transition D. Actually, we had two, we didn't have very many breakdowns in transition at Kansas until those end. KJ Adams got free for that one. Two times we went rebound. We had two mental mistakes. We went there. We went baseline on a rebound when we were supposed to get back, and we were outnumbered, and KJ got a, a dunk. So I know transition defense late um, was, was something we've talked about, but also execution, getting defensive stops. You know, I thought, you know, West Virginia was, you know, they were ISO and they were ISO, and then we need, it was right there back and forth, and we got two stops. Um, but we've had leads going into it. Um, you know, the thing is, is like I've, I've said it here a million times, we've identified it. It's, it's, you got to get timely stops. 
Um, I think we had a nine-point lead against West Virginia, and we had a complete breakdown on a ball screen, just a mental, mental mistake on a ball screen. We had a flex cut. Um, we just we guarded the flex all night. They had that flex duck in. We guarded a certain way the entire night. All of a sudden, we just let the, we, the guy just cut right in front of her face and got for a layup. So you, it's, it's those mental mistakes late in the game um, with that. But nothing, I mean, the differentiation, I mean, I know Kansas and Texas Tech, those were two 10-point leads. So that's probably where you get a, a big part of that number. Um, and then West Virginia, actually nine, so there's three of them. Um, transition D, timely stops. Go ahead, Gene. For, I mean, Oklahoma State comes into this game, they've had trouble scoring as of late, but they've got talent. Could you talk about the matchup and what you see and how you, how you think this matchup's going to go? Man, I think they got older veteran, really good guards. I mean, Avery Anderson's an all-league type player. Um, Bryce is having – Bryce Thompson's having a great year. They brought in two for the portal that I – you know, John Michael Wright and Asbury are two guys that can really stretch the floor. They can really, really shoot it. So I think their guard play is as good as it is in the, in the league. And then you got the best top three shot blocking in the country. I mean – um, I think Boone's having a phenomenal year. I think he's leading him in scoring and Big 12 play. Um, Cissé, whether he plays or not, still is, in my opinion, one of the best shot blockers in the country, one of the best rim rollers in the country. Um, and Tyreek, those guys are, you know, you got two guys averaging or getting nine blocks, and, and that's not even counting Cissé. So they really protect the rim. They got veteran older guards. I think they're very good. They're really sound defensively, really sound defensively. Um, and, uh, you know, that's why they're very good. Jeff, or obviously it's a rivalry game, but, you know, both teams meet on the bubble looking for resume wins. Just how much does that add to the stakes of things? It seems like it's more than just bragging rights. No, it's, it's – um, that, that, that's the bigger – that's a huge picture. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, I mean, the, the, the rivalry's great and everything. I know the fan base and everything. But, like, in terms of really trying to set yourself up, we're both trying to get good wins. To, to, to advance, big wins to get in the bank for a resume, to advance in the conference standings. So there's a lot at stake. I mean, there's obviously the bedlam and the, the, the rival between the fan bases, um, but also each individual team is trying to posture and position themselves to, to, to get a better resume. What do you remember from that atmosphere out there last season? Just what makes it so tough? That's a tough place to play at. Well, last year was right after I, 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 it was um, – the, I mean, it was all about the SEC and Coach Riley. I mean, they were killing us. They had newspapers. Everything was about the SEC and Coach Riley leaving. So um, I think that's died down. Um, and so we'll see. I, I anticipate. But, and I also, the other thing I remember is I, I remember sitting there, and my back was right here, and I, was, I, I think I could touch the students. My wife was right there, and they were very great. They were very gracious to my, my wife and family. But I don't know if I've had a student section that I could high-five. I was high fiving the students. They probably didn't like it, but but they were right there. I mean, it's I mean they're literally right on top of you. And I remember I remember that. I remember them being really loud, um, right on top of you. They're right there on the end zone. Um, but uh, they were great fans. I didn't I didn't see anything off offline. They were they were right on top of you, but they were just pulling for your team and killing us about the SEC. Those two things. You mentioned you love winning by 25, but since you don't do it, does that change how you have to approach practice? No. No. With practice is the practice that has nothing. With practice time? Does no. Try no. We're, we, got, we got our process in practice. The prep, getting better ourselves, getting different things in. Um, our practice process is, is the same uh, no matter who our opponent is. Go back, James. You have a, a, a pretty good inside game yourself. Uh, Tanner and Sam, it seems to be working pretty well for you, wouldn't you? I mean, don't you think? Yeah, I think those guys have been super productive. Um, you know, it's great to see Tanner uh, get back in the groove, you know, from, from, from the distance there. And, um, you know, Sam um, continues to just be a spark plug of toughness um, of, and productivity, you know, getting us extra possessions, um, you know, with his fight on the offensive glass, finishing around the rim. So um, they both give us, you know, you know, production. And, uh, you know, Tanner, we like to see more shots, especially down low, you know, getting him in the paint. And, um, you know, I think those two threes were his first two shots and maybe his only two shots the last game. And, uh, but he did some nice things facilitating, passing, running the offense through him a lot. So, and uh, just really productive with those guys. Does on the floor when you were recruiting him for 
first started watching him. When, when did you first recognize the, the confidence and the intangibles and everything that's allowed him to, to perform the way he has so far? Well, I, I watched him on the, the, the AU circuit, you know, that summer when I got the job. And, um, you know, just watching him and you could just tell he was a coach's son. He played with joy and he just had confidence. And then um, I noticed the confidence, but when I really noticed the confidence is when he went to prep school and he played in that grind session against all the top players in the country and everything. And just watching him there just rise up and he got MVP of that grind session. So it was really there. I, I saw him at his, at his AU, he played on the Adidas circuit. His team won the whole thing. And you could just see him, the confidence there, like his team was going to win. He was, you know, he was leading the team, and you saw that just the confidence. And then he did it on the on the grind session against some of the best players in the country. Um, he's uh, he's not entitled. He's a he's he's a he's a respectful, confident. He he knows he knows he needs to learn. He knows he needs to work, but he's very confident. And that's that's he's a respectful, confident. And that's a that's a great place to be in. Tack on what you were saying about Tanner earlier, uh, he had a really big game in Stillwater last year. Are, are you looking, is this a spot where you're looking for him to get more assertive, I guess, offensively? You know, whether it's, 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 um, whether it's this game or not, every game I am. Every game. He's a fifth year. He's my only fifth year senior. He's a guy that's been through a lot. He's a double figure guy. I, every game plan I go into with Tanner going, man, this is, you know, get him a ton of touches. You know, him and I are going to meet one on one right after this film session, after this press conference. Um, constantly trying to pour into him. He, there's, I don't know if there's anybody who wants to win more in the room than Tanner Gross. He knows this is his last time around. So <clears throat> it doesn't matter the game or the opponent. I got big plans going on every game. He's a big part of our game plan every game. Sooner Scoop HD.